God for Tuesday. Yep. It's the day the Lord has made, and we live with thankfulness and joy and supernatural grace abounding. I want you to do that right now. I want you to take a moment this morning, this afternoon, or, well, it's actually evening for some of you, and let's thank God for his awesome mercy, his tender mercies, his loving kindness, his grace that is abounding, his deciding that he would abound toward us in all times to come the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us. Father, I thank you for supernatural anointing, God, that empowers us with thanksgiving. God, that makes us so grateful that we live receiving your abundance. God, we receive grace. We receive peace. We receive joy. We receive strength. We receive wisdom. And God will ever give you praise. We'll bless you with our whole heart. We'll remind our soul, don't forget the benefits of our living God. Father, we give you thanks. Father, I thank you for the anointing God that looses every burden off our shoulders and lifts every burden so the yoke is destroyed because of the anointing god we give you praise and thanksgiving father that through the thanksgiving of many it redounds to the glory of god father i thank you that what you open up in our life in praise gives us place of power and fulfillment in your anointing holy spirit of the living god we open up our present heart, God, to you and give you thanks. We give you glory. We give you praise. We give you joy. We give you the honor that is due your name. We give you the thanksgiving. Father, we thank you that in everything with prayer and supplication, we make a request made known unto you, God. The peace of God garrisons our, vow, our heart and our mind through Christ Jesus. I thank you that in everything with prayer, God, everything we give thanks. In Kadosh Kalebrato Masa Papa Kodoshaye. Father, we give you thanks. Take a moment right now and live thankful. Live grateful. Live grateful that you have this day to live in, to reap the harvest of God's children, the souls of men. Thank God for this time and season of God's abund abounding grace in your life. Thank God you and I are together, that we are working together the works of God, that we are on a course that is set for increase of the kingdom of God. Thank God for the wisdom of God that is present in your life. Thank God that you can lift your eyes and see the harvest that is ripe, ready to be harvested. Thank God for the anointing that is in you that you need not that any man teach you, but as that same anointing teaches you all things and is true and is no lie, even as it teaches you, you abide in him. Thank God for the awesome presence and power of him who has called you by his grace and mercy to fulfill all righteousness. God, I thank you for healing. That is the children's bread. Oh, my God, I give you praise for the awesome power of healing virtue that flows from your throne. I thank you, Lord, for financial breakthroughs that abound, for you have provided for every vision. You said, write the vision, make it plain upon tables that he that reads it may run with it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. Though it tarry, wait for it, for it shall surely come. God, we bind ourselves with expectation to the fulfilled call of God and purpose on every one of our lives. We give you thanks that we are infused with you. We are filled with you. We are anointed by you. We are sent by you. We are fulfilled in all things in your grace and loving kindness. God, we thank you. For you are good. You are good. Your mercy endures. Your grace abounds. Your peace rules. Your wisdom is resident. God and your truth can never be aborted. 
we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. What a day to be alive. Thankful Tuesday. I know we begin today with Thanksgiving, but that's what we are called to do. So that, you know, when you give thanks, you get everything in perspective. You live with a gratefulness that you're, you're just grateful. You know, recently I was empowered to be able to do something that was beyond the scope and scale of a, of a natural course of actions in a person's life. And, and God graced me to take this action. And I'm just so thankful that I was able to do it. You see, sometimes those of us who have sacrificed our, our giving and when I, when I consider a sacrifice, it is something that is set in my perception for another purpose. But God has instructed or inspired me to honor him rather than honoring my objective. So in a sacrifice, what happens, I, I, I want you to hear what I'm saying because this is all in the dimension of giving thanks unto the Lord, that as we sacrifice, I remember in my early walk in Christ, and these things stick in every believer's life, the defining moments. I, I was giving my tithes, I was honoring God, but I, I just didn't have any more money, but I had Saturdays free. And so, one of the pastors that was in the ministry had wanted to convert his garage into a uh, an office area for ministry so he could not be ministering in his living room but have a place where people, when they come, they could receive and, and experience the, the breakthroughs that God was giving to them. So I took my Saturdays and I, I had limited finances to sacrifice the only thing I had left to sacrifice was my time. And so I sacrificed every Saturday until I completely renovated his garage and I took my finances of whatever was available. I, I borrowed whatever people would give to me. They, they would give me lumber, other people. I, I went and I asked for uh, remnants of carpet. I had carpet sufficient. Then I, I went and I asked for paint because I didn't have money to buy paint. But I went to a paint store and I asked him, I said, if you have any leftover paint, I'm doing this as a personal gift to a servant of God that I want to honor. And so one paint store gave me about, I think it was like 20 gallons of paint that I had enough to paint the entire place, the roof, the ceiling rather, and all the walls and the carpeting, and then we needed windows. So I went to a window company. I said, surely you have windows that are not built to the right specification and sizes. They said, oh yeah, we have odd windows over here for sale. I said, well, let me ask you, if you have a window that you haven't been able to sell, would you give it to me so that I could honor somebody else because I'm sacrificing my own time to do this for somebody that I honor. And so they gave me the window. Then I needed a door. So I did the same thing with a lumber company. I said, do you have an exterior door? That is because I haven't built the framework yet of the, the, that dimension of, the, of the, the building. So if the door was off, it was okay. I could build a framework of the door that would fit the odd size door, the outside door. It wouldn't fit a storm door because it was an odd, shy, odd shape, but this particular company had an odd shaped outside door and they had a matching storm door. So as a result, what took place is I had everything that I was to sacrifice given to me. The lumber, the carpet, the paint, the drywall, I had drywall pieces that were left over from other jobs. I had two big sheets that one construction place gave to me that they said, well, we, it's going to cost us more to restock it than it would be to just give it to you. So I said, well, I'll come up at a time when I, I can and, and get this. I know I'm taking time to share with you, but when, 
what I'm doing is I'm laying the groundwork of thanksgiving, of acknowledging a sacrifice, acknowledging that God is worthy of our sacrifice. And throughout the course of these next few months, October, November, if you're in the four-state area, I'm asking you to sacrifice your Saturdays to work with us. Maybe you have time during the day or evenings to help us because we're not doing this because we're building a church for a lot of people to sit in. We're doing this to reach the four-state region with about a half a million lights, a tremendous light show, then an experience of walking through the life of Jesus and experiencing God's salvation at the end. We have a little salvation house that's there that people can come and receive the living Christ and experience salvation. And so I can just picture Reverend Ray, who's been with us for 30-some years now in ministry. He's in his mid-70s coming and being out there in the little heater inside this little house that we have between the, the crowds of people that come by. And so we have many other evangelists that are trained to reap the harvest of souls. But this is so precious that I, I just get so excited about sacrificing for a vision. And when I have a vision, all provision comes and flows into it. But thanksgiving is critical. Otherwise, what will happen is you can do it with murmuring and disputing. You argue with yourself. So I'm asking you today, as you are in Thanksgiving Tuesday, I know I haven't read a lot of scripture to you, but I'm sharing with you a spiritual law that is so critical to your attitude because your attitude of gratitude keeps you from ever being negative or complaining about what you put your hand to. So just like in my early days, in my early 20s, as Faye and I were remarried again, and I was set to just put the life in a complete abandonment for the kingdom of God, and I took time, and then I found that I needed resources. So they were given to me so that I could accomplish the sacrifices in my heart. I believe God is speaking to men and women today in this dimension of th sacrifice and thanksgiving for the harvest because we're only in this world for a short period of time. It is called a vapor. It is but for a moment. I remember 30 years of serving with Dr. Cirillo. Now he's gone. He's in the throne of God. There are people that have been with us for 37 years in the ministry and we're going into our 40th year here in the next three years, two years, and the next thing you know, we'll be in our 50th year, and then by the grace of God, we'll see our 60th year, but I don't know if we're going to see our 70th year in ministry. That would put me in my 90s, actually close to 100. So if Jesus doesn't return, all of a sudden, I'm in the throne of God. My wife's in the throne of God. And now we're in the cloud of witnesses, and a new era of life is taking place. So we can only sacrifice while we're here. We can also sacrifice in our will. You can will in your will your assets to Jesus' experience or victory. You can, to Jesus' or experience or victory. You can put in your will that I want a percentage of my will. Now, I know many of you have loved ones, but some of you... In all sincerity, you don't have people that you would want to enrich with your life's work. You'd want to advance the kingdom of God. So you decide that you're going to put in your will Victory Christian Fellowship or Christian Outreach Fellowship, which is the, the parent company and ministry of Jesus' experience. Because our whole passion of Jesus' experience is outreach. It's soul winning. It's training, developing, leading people into Christ. So whichever you decide, whether in my will, I have the kingdom of God is a major segment of my will and purpose. So I'm talking about thankfulness, living in gratitude of honoring him. I had an individual share with me the other day. 
He said to me, he said, I'm not a wealthy man. I don't have much money. I said, but it's not about how much you have. It's about what you do with what you have and that you take what you have and honor God. Well, that individual had come into now wealth. And because he was a significant person of sacrifice and honor in God, when the wealth did come into his hands through an inheritance, he honored God with the first fruits. He honored God with sacrifices, with tithes. And so now his statement, I'm not a wealthy man, is now, thank God for his great increase that has taken place. You see, on one hand, he saw himself diminished by his income, but God had another plan. And God has another plan for you. If you live with thankfulness, if you live with just gratefulness in life, if you live giving and worshiping God with your tithes, your offerings, your love gifts, your vows, your sacrifices, you, do you know what happens in you? You end up being the recipient of the most unexpected, supernatural, abounding increase that shifts you from glory to glory. You see, this is the God we serve. He has things set up for us to fulfill the destiny of God like we have never asked nor dreamed. We are the called people of God to receive. We had a friend of ours who, they had a, a friend of theirs who never had children. And they had an extremely valuable piece of property in the corner of one of the major sections of, of our community here in Delaware. And all of a sudden, they woke up one day. That, that friend of theirs had gone on to be with the Lord. And they found out that in their will, this piece of property, which is a thriving business, was given to him. And so now, he's working in one industry but now he's got an entire business. So his wife goes in and runs the business. And now then they go and sell it. And multi-million dollars later, they're in a whole different dimension of life financially. They're in their early 70s now. But at the same time, their life in service and honor to God has now broken through. Because God knew ahead of time that they were going to be a paymaster. They were going to be one that literally advanced the kingdom of God in a dimension that was beyond the scope and scale of a natural thought and perception. So today, I want to appeal to your dimension of thankfulness to God. Your thanksgiving to Him. This is thanks, giving thanks Tuesday. I know I'm in the pink because we're just honoring God. I got into the sun the other day and somebody says, oh, you got sunburnt. No, no, I said, I just got sun glow. I just honor the king of glory. So as we're in this presence of peace and joy and loving him and honoring him, today your sacrifices mean everything. They are worthy of a sweet smell, a sacrifice, a savor that is acceptable unto God. And God will meet all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. You will find yourself increasing in capacity, increasing in vision, lifting up your eyes for more souls, getting involved in greater influences of sacrifice to advance the kingdom of God, and you're going to also find new dimensions of income streams to fulfill the purpose of God in your life. So I give God praise. I give God glory. I thank him for the great grace, the tender mercy, the loving kindness. Father, I thank you for my brothers and sisters today as they are honoring you, whether it's in their will, whether it's in their daily sacrifice, whether it's in their daily giving, their tithes, their first fruits. God, I thank you. We, like David, said, remember my offerings. And God, I thank you for great grace that abounds in Jesus' name. So, bless the Lord as you give. Sacrifice your time. 
bless God's kingdom. Now let's get on our phone call. Let's talk about thankfulness. Let's talk about how, what can you do to go over the threshold to increase the kingdom of God. In Canada, it's 709-500-6767. Canada, get on the phone. 709-500-6767. In America, it's 302-561-6767. America, 302-561-6767. God bless you. I'm looking forward to hearing the testimonies of the thanksgiving that is in your heart.